I decided to make my own font to use for my channel or other branding materials in order to test out Font Forge. Stick around to hear the process of how I made my own font. Let's hop into today's video. So I opened up Photoshop and imported a picture of some graph paper I found online. This was just to make sure that my letters all were around the same size. I wrote out the sentence, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, which might be a sentence that you've seen before. And I wrote this sentence down four times in my own handwriting in Photoshop. Two times I wrote it in all capital letters and two times I wrote it in all lowercase letters. And I wrote it out four times because I figured the third and fourth times would be written more naturally than the first two, where I was a lot more focused on being neat other than just being authentic and writing the way I usually write. So now that I had that done, I cropped the canvas until I was able to export each letter as its own photo file. I've only worked on the capital letters so far, so those were the only pictures I exported from Photoshop. Now moving into FontForge, I started a new file and I imported all of my reference photos that I exported from Photoshop and started crafting my letters using the pen tool. So in FontForge, every glyph gets its own box. So you basically open up, let's say the capital letter A box. So I open up that box and then I import the reference photo of my capital letter A into that window. Uh, and you pretty much do the same thing for every glyph or letter that you have there. So moving on to the pen tool, my experience with the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator helped me to get the hang of using the pen tool in FontForge and it made the whole process a little easier to grasp. But what was different about FontForge is that you have to think about your glyphs in terms of positive and negative space. So what is, you know, the space or like the design that we'll actually see and what is more so just background space. So to draw the positive space, you have to draw your letter in a clockwise direction. And for the negative space, like the hole in the center of the letter O, for example, you need to draw that in a counterclockwise direction. So that took a little bit of time to get used to. The next thing I had to consider was making sure that the letters all looked consistent in terms of their height, their width, their thickness, etc. So I did a lot of tweaks with that as well. Again, since my handwriting is a little bit messy, at first, if, if I would have just left my letters exactly the way they were, I feel it wouldn't translate well as a font because some of the letters were thinner and some of them were thicker and some of them were wider and some of them were taller and they had different heights and they were a little all over the place. So I did have to tweak the letters a bit to make them feel more uniform as one font. And I also had to consider how the letters looked side by side in order to form words and sentences. Even though so far I only have the capital letters down, I'm really happy with how this font turned out and I hope to continue working on it to get the lowercase letters and also uh, some special characters in there too. I think FontForge is a great software if you want to make your own fonts. I mean, it's free, which makes it super accessible. The interface can seem a little confusing when you first open it, especially if you've never opened a similar software before. To be honest, when I first opened it, it was a little bit intimidating because of the way that it's laid out. You have all of these blank squares, you know, for each character and it could be a little daunting, but it makes sense the more you use it. The next thing could be a little bittersweet. A lot of the things that you would need to open in order to tweak your glyphs and test them out open in separate windows. So you have like your main window where you have all of those little boxes for each character. 
and then you have the window where you're actually using your pen tool and tweaking the shape of the letter and then you have another window for testing it out to see how they look together and this could be really cool since you can have all of these things open at once without having them you know be like these enormous windows that take up a lot of space on your screen the windows are actually really small so that could be a good thing but it could be a little frustrating if you click off of one of the smaller ones uh let's say you know you click off of the small one and now the main window with all of the boxes is to the front and then you have like all these extra smaller windows behind that so i think if you can arrange your windows in a neat way that makes sense that would probably help uh just for it to not be so confusing one thing i will say is that i've had some students have trouble opening up files due to the files just not being recognized by fontforge uh, specifically when starting a new project so they'll try to open up a maybe let's say for example they download a font from a website and they want to open it in fontforge to see how it looks and to test the interface out Sometimes they can't find that file and it's weird because they'll save it in a normal folder that should easily be recognized by the computer but for some reason uh, FontForge just doesn't read it. So I've had some issues with that. I'm not sure if there's a particular way that you should arrange your files but I think if you typically do have organized file management then you probably won't have a problem with it. I personally haven't had a problem with it but just saying just saying this because I've had students have the problem. I've also had some strange errors occur like when I would go save, it would show an error saying that it couldn't be saved but then if you check your folder where you saved the project to, it'll be there. If you're getting that error, maybe just check for that. I don't know if there's a definite solution to that but from what I've experienced, that wasn't too problematic. Overall, if you want to make your own font, try out FontForge. It's definitely a good choice. And if you've used FontForge before, let me know what your thoughts are. And if this is your first time hearing about it, let me know what you think and whether you think you'd give it a try. I'll leave the link to download FontForge in the description below. And of course, as always, let me know if you'd like me to make more FontForge videos. Perhaps taking a deeper dive into the steps and interface. And let me know if you have any other software you want me to do a video on. Have a totally awesome day, and I'll see you next time.